light flashes in the control tower. That's the sign. It's our turn to go now. We are forced to go. And the whole of our four engines are giving out a full-throated roar as we start to slowly gather speed down the mile and a half wrong runway. Ahead of us, with the third aircraft already airborne, we can see the port and starboard lights shining like red and green stars in the dusk. We are racing to join it, gathering speed now all the way past the control tower, just a little group of ground crews giving us a wave as we disappear now, moving rapidly all the time. I'm just looking up, we are still on the ground. It takes all this time to get off. But now, at long last, so well, there we go, we are, we, are, we are clear. We are airborne and on our way to join the stream of bombers making towards Berlin. Hello, navigator. Hello, Berlin. We are crossing the coast now. Thank you. Okay, chaps, we're at 8,000 feet now. Oxygen's on. Uh, hello, navigator. Skipper here. Nav lights on. Thank you, Skipper. I'm standing forward at the pilot seat. And right forward of me, Bill, a uh, six-foot bomb aimer is curled up in his compartment, surrounded by perfect spurs. And right in front of me sits Scotty, our little flight engineer. Again, the pilot sits by him, the green glow from his instrument panel, just lighting up the outline of his face. And then behind me, with a blackout curtain, and behind that curtain, Con, the navigator, he's an Aussie from Brisbane, just got his ruler out over our maps. Sparky, the wireless ops in his cabin behind Con. He's keeping his eye on Reg Pitsley, our BBC engineer, with just a tiny pinpoint of light to help him cut this disc. The first time a disc has ever been cut in a bomber heading for Germany. again as we watch the flak, a bright light winking in among the heavy concentrated beams. They've got every single search ride you could possibly imagine out there to catch us. And in a moment it'll be our turn to pass through them. A dark shape is going out ahead of us. Another Lancaster to lead in. There goes the flak again. They must be having a go at us all right. All the time, we're moving in. It's disconcerting to see that welcome waiting for us. I'm watching while, and in it, they've caught one of our aircraft. Up goes the flak around him, bursting in vivid flashes. Maybe after us, because the searchlights are starting to move away. They've left that. Yes, they've left that other bomber, and they're moving now slowly towards us, feeling for us all the time. Pumping up the track in a steady stream. They've swung away from us now, swung back. And I've won a lot of bit sorry. And it looks as if uh, this time we've slipped through. The first thing we can see now is a wall of searchlights. Not the 30 as we saw as we came into the coast, but they're in hundreds. It's a wall of light with very few breaks. And behind that wall is a pool of fiercer light. It's growing red and green and blue. And over that pool, there are myriads of flares hanging in the sky. That's the city itself. And there in the heart of the globe, there goes a bigger a red flash, the biggest we've yet seen. That must be the first of the, the big 4,000 pound bombs going down. It's flag coming up at us now. That one, one went then, and it was pretty near to me. Our aircraft rocked. So we're running straight into the most gigantic display of fireworks in the world. And we're due over our target in about two minutes' time, and Bill, our bomb aimer, is forward. He's lying prone over his bomb site. The searchlights are coming nearer now all the time. There's one cone 
split again, and then it comes together. They seem to stray out at first, like the tentacles of an octopus waiting to catch you. And this time, as they come together, they've got a Lancaster right in the center. And it's up to us. It is getting too hot with these searchlights, and we're starting weaving. Our pilot puts the nose of the lank down, and we're tilting away. The furious angle up comes our starboard wing. Uh, hello, engineer. Skipper here. Yeah. Will you put the revs up, please? Yeah. Okay, keep weaving. A lot of searchlights and fighter players, Skipper. Yeah, uh, see you Okay, boys, okay. Bump door open. Hello, Bombardier. Okay with you are. Bump door open. Bomb door's open, Bombardier. Searchlights. We've left the whole boiling cauldron behind us. And as soon as our run out was finished, we all hear a heartfelt sigh of relief. And now I'm looking back right over the giant tail fin. And that's our last sight of it. There's a great glow in the sky, and around that glow, a feathery spray of searchlights. And now we are 600 miles to go for home. of England, just a little light from a beacon flashing up to us from the darkness below. And after the glare of light we left behind in Berlin, it seemed small and frail, and nevertheless everybody on board F for Freddy is mighty glad to see it. Hello, Bombardier. English coast should be coming up now. Will you tell me when we cross it, please? Okay, navigator, I'll let you know when we cross it. I can see it coming up ahead now. Thank you. Uh, nav lights on, Skipper. Okay, navigator. Nav lights on. Hell, Bill, do you see what I see? I can see the new moon through the window. Oh, don't worry about that. It's only perfect anyway. Ah, oh, perfect. Maybe you got something there, chum. Hope so. <laughs> My knees are singing the second chorus of Annie Laurie. Skipper Red, Skipper Red, can't our uh, good friend the engineer give us a little bit of a song? What was that? Go on, give him a song, will you? Oh, no, I wouldn't play this on anybody. <laughs> Go on, Jock, don't be so bloody bashful. Don't live it down, Jock. It's not a case of being bashful. Come on, Jock. Oh, no. 
Now, Scotchman, anyone? Carry on. <laughs> 